Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, please be with us today. Uh, help us in all that we do, in our prayer, in our work, in our joys, in our sorrows. Help us through the good times and the bad times. Help us with losses and bearing them charitably. And personally, please help me in my studies today um, and everything I do. We invoke your name upon our lives. Please bless us. We ask this in your name. Amen. And the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so a few months ago, Joseph Pierce was here on campus. I got to speak with him. I also got to record much of his speech. It was on progress. Um, you can watch that. I'll put a link here. Um, but today I want to read a little something of his to you um, that can be found in the last pages of Catholic Literary Giants. So, yes, very good book. Um, and this is really what Pierce, uh, his, um, where, where he's really passionate and professional is in uh, the biographies and um, the analysis, um, criticism, and just overall uh, views, particularly religious views of um, literary figures, such as Tolkien, C.S. Lewis, G.K. Chesterton. But in like the last two pages, he's really talking about Christmas, and I'd just like to read a little bit of that to you now. Pierce says, Christmas is not an annual shopping spree. It isn't advertisement ad nauseum. It isn't the annual office party, nor is it the hangover that follows it. It isn't any of these perennial seasonal rituals, all of which in any case take place in the season of Advent before Christmas is even begun. Does such a negative attitude place one in the role of an Ebenezer Scrooge grumbling self-righteously at the desire of others to celebrate? Do sober-minded Christians wish to celebrate Christmas by spoiling the party? Certainly not. And heaven forbid, the spirit of Christmas might not be found in the ringing of a cash register, nor on television, nor in the bottom of the twelfth glass of whiskey. But it is to be found in the ringing of church bells, the singing of carols, and the sharing of a bottle of the finest Scottish malt with friends. It is to be found in the giving of gifts, the faces of children, red-nosed reindeer, red-nosed Santas, red-nosed carol singers, red-breasted robins, and glowing fires. It is to be found in snowmen, snowballs, and snowflakes, and in the holly and the ivy, the mistletoe and the wine, yule logs, Christmas trees, colored lights, candles, plum pudding, fruitcake, and a partridge in a pear tree. It is to be found in all these things, but all these things are not it. It is something infinitely greater, infinitely larger, infinitely smaller. It is infinitely more beautiful, more bountiful, more blissful, more bashful, and more bold. It is the kiss of God on the unworthy lips of man. It is man warming himself in the physical presence of God. It is God warming himself in the physical womb of a woman. It is humility exalted. It is life, it is love. It is the love of life and the life of love. It is he, his is the presence that Christmas presents. Life, love, man, God, man, God. The kiss of life. What is Christmas? Christmas is he, and he is worth celebrating. May he who breathes life into Christmas bring its message of love, its warmth, and its light to every man. May God bless us, everyone.